If you are a developer working with Python, you may have encountered situations where you need to convert your data into a format that is more human readable. In this video, I will explain how you can achieve that using Python. The library that we'll be using is called Humanize and it is installed using the pip install syntax. Just type the exclamation mark pip3 install humanize. I have already installed it so I will not um, be running this anymore. So I have to comment this. And after that, there are a couple of additional libraries that I will be using in this tutorial. The first one is the time. So I import the time as DT because we'll be working with um, time data. The second one is the actual library that we have installed. We import humanize as H. This H is because like I don't want to tie humanize every time I want to use the library so I'll be using H instead which is shorter and final function is the get size from the operating system library this is used to get the size of a given file okay now that the requirement are satisfied let's get started with big numbers by printing big number if I print big number this big number is like the exact same number that I have here. However, if I want to have a kind of more human readable format, I can use the int word. It's going to tell me in a more human way this number what it's like. This first print statement is telling that this is 1.0 trillion. So it's a kind of estimation of what this number is, which is way better compared to this one. If you want to kind of look at this number and know exactly what it looks like. And the second approach is instead of having a look at this large number is to separate them using comma. This is done using the int comma function. It's going to write the number using the commas. The second one is when we are working with daytime. I have actually initialized this one with 2022 September 6th. If I print this one, yeah, it's good. It's 2022 September 6th, but it might be even better if I can have a string representation of this number. This is done using the natural date. So let's run it. This is exactly the same one here. The difference is that we have a string representation. And instead of having this whole information, we can also get only like the day and the month which is done using the natural day instead of natural date. This is pretty cool. And similarly to what we've done with daytime, we can do the same thing with duration. Instead of getting the number of hours or number of days between two dates, we can get the string representation. This is an example. This first variable is going to get the current date. And I have initialized a second variable, which is like three days, 23 hours and 40 minutes. I'm going to get the difference between those two dates. Let's say that I want to print let's comment this one first and print past time right so if i print past time this past time is going to print something like like this what if i can get a more human readable format instead of having all this bunch of information by applying the natural time function i'm going to get this string representation i get three days ago which is way better than this one you know when we look at this date 21st of February 2023 that was three days ago because today is February 25th and it's currently 6 p.m. and taking into consideration all this information it is exactly three days ago sweet let's move forward let's print the size of this file this get size function is going to generate the size of this data.csv if I print this it's going to give 109 but 109 what you know this is kind of confusing if i'm telling someone that my file size is 109 the most obvious question is 109 watts then you have to be able to tell you know is it like megabyte gigabyte or even byte this is where natural size can be helpful and using natural size we get you know 109 bytes isn't that better 
All right, let's move to scientific notation. Sometimes when using big numbers, we can use scientific notations, something like the power of 10 um, to represent big numbers. And this is something that we can get using the scientific function. So my initial number is this number and by applying the scientific function i can get the scientific notation which is 2.30 to 10 of the power of 6 and i can also specify the precision value which is here 5 and by using the precision of 5 i can get the precision means like the number of values i want after the decimal point which is 5 and the default value of the precision is 2 that's the reason why we have only 3 and 2 here another cool thing that we can do with the humanized library is to deal with the fractions looking at this number if i tell you uh, what is the fractional representation of this number this can be achieved by using the fractional function and this is the final result let's use like a different number and the fractional representation is this one and i can check this one by running what is the value of this and we have exactly the same number the difference here is that we have more on um, decimal values and you might be wondering yeah this is amazing this is a great library so what if i want to use a different language like french or russian to be able to make like to execute all those Preview steps into the language of your choice, you have to first activate the language. To activate this language, you use humanize.i18n. 18n means internationalization, and you give um, the code of the language code that you want to use. Here it's French, FR. And now I can use the natural time. I'm just using one of the examples I have used before. This is going to take, you know, like three seconds ago, right? And by using this three seconds ago. Oh, actually, I have not run this one. So I have to run this to activate the fringe. And now I can run this, which means like it's written. Il y a trois secondes. Il y a trois secondes means three seconds ago. So that's all for this video, guys. Feel free to like, comment, and share. And also, if there are some other topics that you want me to cover in my future videos, please drop in the comment section so that I can take them into consideration. Once again, thank you so much for your time. And see you next time. Bye-bye.